Hey, happy Thanksgiving. My Thanksgiving did not pan out. I had a pain. I just, um, I have chronic pain, generalized pain. I had, it kind of came on me last night. So I decided quit trying so hard, just let myself rest. And I ordered Chinese today. So, <laughs> and it was good. And Gary told me not to do too much. And I always do too much. So anyway, um, so I hope you had a good Thanksgiving. So to, this video I'm going to do a little bit different because some things kind of failed and and stuff. Um, uh, I'll go ahead and show you the products real quick I was going to do. So I was going to make cheese straws. And I did not want to do the one I used to do in high school. I haven't made them in a long time uh, because they used this cheese, which I didn't know if was still available. It's reversed in here. It's Old English Spread Craft. When I was a kid, this was um, in the refrigerated section. Now it's on the shelf. At the grocery store, I found it like with Cheese Whiz and Velveeta. I think at Walmart, it was kind of a kind of with the crackers. I don't know. But anyway, um, but I didn't do that one because I didn't know it was available. And I tried a Paula Deen recipe thinking, oh, that'll be fine. And it wasn't. It was okay. It was fine. It was meh. It was, uh, it was kind of dry. And... Um, Gary didn't like them, and sitting, Adam didn't like them. They were good enough to be eaten up. So <laughs> anyway, so I did that in the in the cookie press, and I have always, um, I've never had a cookie press I liked because I well I'm at the thrift store and stuff, and they never worked very well. This one works differently. Instead of a trigger, it has a screw thing. And you just set it down and you screw it. And I kind of learned how to, you know, how far to screw it for each one. And um, and it, it made the thing. The reason I wanted to use it for the cheese straws was because of this one that made them like this. And that one looks good. This is definitely, uh, you know, cherry picked. Um, I had it, it was a, I had a little trouble with it because it, you know, it was kind of bulky. And I hung it, I let it hang, and then it would do it, and I couldn't get it even, but probably that's just a practice, um, and probably the dough might not have been the right conditions or whatever. So I might still try to do that if I make more cheese straws. I mean, these, like, Paula Dean's recipe was like 40 or 50. Um, you know, they make a lot. That's why they're, it's a really a good southern staple for taking to, you know, you know, little social events and things like that. So... Um, but here I, I tried out the, one of the, one of the dies, um, uh, in it and it turned out pretty nice. Um, there was one, this was, I didn't know what this was, I, what shape that is. Y'all can tell me maybe, I don't know. This is what they, they, my, my dough on that second round was a little, cause I did it the next day was a little, probably not the right conditions. That's the shape it made for one of them. I don't know if that's which side's right. I don't know what it is, unless it's some kind of bug or something. Beetle. I don't really want beetle cookies. Unless, you know, different time period. So that's kind of how it turned out. So if somebody knows what that is, I mean, maybe a snowman or some kind of animal. I don't know. So we won't belabor that one. Um, so the, the, the dies are nice. They have 11, I think, or a bunch of, bunch of them. Uh, they have these little flat ends on it, and you put it you put it in there, and you just turn it. It gets in these little notches here, and that holds it in. I had to get a little tool to turn it to take it out, but turning it in was was fine. And so and it worked really nice. It's really sturdy. And it just has a screw thing. Um, if both ends open, so you can clean it really well. And if you've got some air in it, you know, and it's not pushing because it's a vacuum. You can open either end and get, you know, wherever the air is and kind of get it out of there. And it, and it makes, you know, opens as a tube so it cleans really nicely. The other thing is the decorator. Um, this is it with, a, it has a cap. And it has this a star tip. It has uh, several tips. The open star and a closed star. Uh, I just learned about that. It makes it a little bit different design where the prongs are more open. Or Oh, here's the closed star. Those are open. That's the closed star. And that's the, and this is the open star. If you know anything about... I don't know much about cake decorating. I find this easier to use than a cake decorator bag. It doesn't have... 
the control as much, but um, this one probably be good for the cheese straws with the flat bottom. Um, it's also got a writing tip, and this is a little thing where you can put icing inside the cake, you know, like they do with Twinkies and stuff. And so, I'm still kind of experimenting with that, so I just wanted to show you that. Just, and they think of things. That's really nice. So, they've got the ring here with the tip on it, and the cap goes on it, but they also got a second ring. I was like, why do they have a second ring? Well, you can switch out the caps and put the cover on it, you know. I guess that's the reason. I, and then you can switch them back and forth if, if you need to. Um, that's my thought on it anyway. So, yeah. that's So, that's that's, that's the tools. I wanted to kind of get that out of the way. Because I'm kind of, yeah, showing you my face today. Because, <laughs> I, you know, something kind of happened when I was, when the Paula Deen cheese straws didn't work. I said, well, I'm going to go back to the ones I used to make in high school. And so I went and got the Quest Club cookbook. Uh, let's see. The Quest Club cookbook is it's a club in Linden, a ladies club, Linden, Alabama, where I'm from, and most of you know. And so, um, and I went and got the recipe for the cheese straws that I used to make. Well, I'll show you how much I use it. This is, I don't know if you can see how nasty that is. That's from the chocolate pound cake uh, that I used to make. I'd give his gifts and stuff. And, um, we didn't have copiers much back then. I mean, when I was in high school, we didn't have a copier. <laughs> we had a mimeograph machine. And, uh, the, you know, we all got addicted to the purple smell. Y'all remember that? <laughs> the purple, smell wasn't purple, but the, um, you know, the purple ink. And we get a test fresh. To y'all younger ones, we get a t It was purple. Everything's purple. And the test would come in. The teacher just run it off. And we'd all sniff on it because it had that. Some, that smell you'd have to you know, you have to do a stencil with that so you like a carbon thing and 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 do it that way so um anyway uh let's see i lost my my thing there were so many things so when i went to the i went to the quest club cookbook and i noticed that um i noticed i found the recipe and it was betty young her name's betty young so Betty's daughter is in the group here. I just met her online. Um, we didn't know each other growing up. We were a little different um, age brackets, and and so, but I always knew about her because Betty would talk about her a lot. And you know, Dale lived in Mobile, and um, you know, and she would keep us updated. And uh, she, Betty lived across the street, and a couple has about three houses down from us in Pinecrest, the subdivision. And she taught Sunday school. Um, she taught Sunday school uh, for the, the teenagers. Um, and also, um, KK's, who's in the group now, her dad helped him teach Sunday school. Those are the two I remember. I'm sure there were others. Um, and and it's just kind of like bringing back this flood of memories of me making these cheese straws, but also um, of just the people and, and stuff. And Betty's interesting... Um, too, because she, she, one of her roles in town is that she did the part, Linden Party Line column in the newspaper, and we didn't have you know, social media or even the internet back then. So, what what Betty would do is she would keep up with with just news going on with people, people in town visiting, people going out of town to visit people, people in the hospital or been sick or something you know happening, you know, and she would write about it. And she, I think. A lot of the little towns had that, but hers was always the most extensive. <laughs> she really, you know, kept up with, with what was going on. And um, and every every week, you know, people read it and see what's going on with other people, you know, that, that maybe they hadn't seen all week. And um, and it was always kind of interesting. So it just opened up a lot of memories about hometown and, and things. And as I was thumbing through the, the book, I started noticing things. Um... I, the other recipes that I did a lot back then, um, you know, I I did a lot of baking and dessert type things. I didn't do meals and stuff. And looking through this, there's a lot of things I want to try now that I'm growing up. But um, anyway, so <laughs> I saw some saw some bourbon bottles that Betty had that I want to try. <laughs> um, so I just talked about the 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 pound cake that Geraldine um, that was Geraldine Phillips, who was also in the church. Betty was in Linda Baptist Church. And, um, 
and she, that, that was her chocolate pound cake. And I've been craving date balls for years. I've been meaning to make them. I buy dates. I buy Rice Krispies and never get around to making them. And, and, um, and my Aunt Bertha Adams had, had the recipe in there that I used to make the date balls. They were really, they were really good. Dates, Rice Krispies, powdered sugar. I can't remember this in it because that made them in so long, but I've been wanting to for years. And so I think I'm going to have to get around to that. And, um, Doris O'Donnell, who also lived in Pinecrest, um, she, her recipe in there was whip, one of hers was whipping cream pound cake. That is a divide to die for, uh, pound cake, whipping cream pound cake. It is so good. It's like really crispy crust on it. And, and I mean, and, um, Wanda Holly, who also lived in Pinecrest and all these people, except for Aunt Bertha, um, went to Linda Baptist Church. So, uh, Wanda made brown sugar brownies. I remember making those in college for people. And that was, now they call them blondies. You know, they're a thing now, but back then they were novel. They were new. Nobody had seen brown sugar brownies. <laughs> and, uh, and there was, uh, fruitcake cookies I used to like, like to make. And, um, the lady, I didn't know her really, uh, her name is Emmy Jones, but she was a good friend of my grandmother's and she'd talk about her a lot. And, um, and there were, um, a couple of recipes my grandmother made a lot. Um, my grandmother made one of her, you know, and her signature recipes was Mississippi mud cake. I, too chocolatey for me. I don't like too much, too richness, you know, um, but my husband would, and I probably should make it for him. And, and that recipe was submitted by Joy Shager, who lived next door to Betty Young and across the street from me. So, uh, and her, and then the, the next one, and I'm, you know, on Facebook with her daughter, one of her daughters, and, and kept up a little with her. Um, and then Russian tea, my grandmother made a lot of, lot during Christmas time, which is tang and instant tea and some spices. And I loved it. You know, it's all processed, but it was so good. I actually made it for Gary's coworkers years ago because he's been out of that job for what Adam was eight months old. So it's been a long time um, when, you know, that job thing happened. But anyway, for his coworkers one year and, um, you know, it, it made a great gift for something, not healthy gift, but <laughs> anyway, and that was by Nell Henderson, who was also at Linda Baptist Church, and she was the, she was in charge of the, the cafeteria, well, not really cafeteria, it was more of a snack bar at the school, um, and she was in charge of that, and, and, you know, and I was in band with her daughter, and, you know, Facebook with her still today, and, um, and then Witty Rents, this is interesting, because Witty, my grandmother's sister, um, Aunt Belle, Belle Rents, um, used to make these tea cakes and that was her thing. A lot of, a lot of old Southern women have did this and I'd like to find something I could be this way with, but she made tea cakes all the time. And, um, the tea cakes were, um, these really thin crispy things. I mean, knew how she could get them that thin and, and she would just bring them in a bread bag or something because we didn't have Ziplocs back then either. <laughs> this was the 70s. Um, and she would, she, she came to your house. She brought a bag of tea cakes and she just made them all the time. And that was her signature thing. Well, this, her sister-in-law, Witty Rents, who's married to Charles Rents, uh, George Rents' brother, um, was, um, had, had posted that. And I wonder if it was Aunt Belle's because my grandmother had gotten the recipe, and I've, I've gotten the recipe before, and I've lost it, so I'm kind of hoping this is the same recipe, um, but, and, and it probably is, because grandmother, you know, was surprised that Aunt Belle would give it to her so freely, so she wasn't keeping it a secret, um, and then, but Witty, Witty's was, a, Witty was the special ed teacher, uh, at, at the, at the, at the school, and she, um, her signature thing was Brunswick stew. She would can Brunswick stew and she put her recipe for it in here and she would can this amount and she'd, you'd run into her, you come to her house, she'd go to your house or she'd run into you somewhere. She'd give you a pint of, or she gave me a pint when I, <laughs> of Brunswick stew. It might've been a quart. I don't know, but she, she just gave, she just gave out Brunswick stew as that was her calling card. Just like Aunt Belle's calling card was, a uh, was tea cakes and the recipe in here. And I want to reduce it and see if I can make a smaller batch, but is eight hens. 20 pounds of pork and 10 pounds of beef. So that, you know, even me with my massive food preservation stuff is like, whoa, I'm not ready for that project. So, uh, I usually do a turkey at a time and I'll can it and, you know, I can turkey a lot and make soup and stuff, but no more than I can put in, you know, my, I have a canner that does 18 pints 
and I have another canner that um, does um, this some more. I mean, it's a smaller one. So anyway, I just want to. So I, I said all that to kind of, you know, because it it spurred something in me about these memories and and food memories and I, in the back of my mind, I've got a book brewing called Redeeming Food because food's been so vilified lately. Um, and we can't enjoy it because this is bad for you. This camp says this is bad for you. This camp says it's good for you, you know, and there's all this controversy about what's healthy and what you should and shouldn't eat and this food being toxic or whatever. And, um, and it's just, you know, when I think about scripture and I think about, um, how important food is in the Bible, how much it's mentioned and even, even with communion, the bread and the wine, you know, it's just, it's how important it is to, you know, in our spiritual lives as well. And I think there's, you know, got to come a day for, um, for us to get back to that. You know, there's so much about, let's do it quickly, you know, and, and stuff like that. But to me, it's about, I'm trying to get, see, I don't like, I don't like to cook, and there's a lot of reasons. There's some history there, there that I won't get into right now. Um, but recently, as I'm, God's been, I've been ill for, a, started in 2016 with about three years of one illness after another, shingles, multiple respiratory infections, multiple rounds of antibiotics, eight rounds of antibiotics in a little over a year, you know, and um, wounds on my foot and different things like that. And it was, um, um, and I couldn't do much, and God's been kind of, not kind of <laughs> trying to teach me to let go and let him do things and to not try so hard and to enjoy things more and to just, just be, um, uh, cause I'm, can be a little, uh, there's all these things I want to do. And then there's all these things I think I'm supposed to do these expectations, um, you know, letting go of the shoulds and the supposed tos and things, which is another exercise in that with, with the Thanksgiving meal, you know, God allows these circumstances to help me. And I, you know, I, been through it enough to see what he's up to. And I said, okay, yeah, I get it. I get it. <laughs> I can deal with it better. Um, but one thing he told me to do, um, not long ago, you know, prior to COVID, um, he said, your job is to cook. You know, I've got these, um, desires, you know, as a singer songwriter and I've got, um, and I'm homeschooling and different things like that. Um, but he's told me with all, all the things that I have going on or could be doing, and I can't do them all. And I have to let go of a lot of them um, and decide what's important. And he, he said, a lot of that will come when your, your home is in order. And um, being sick for three years and already being a messy person on top of it, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling with that. And God has sent people to help me. He sent um, um, a lot of things. And so, but he, one of the things he told me, he said, my job's to cook. My job's to take care of my family first. And that's what it's about. That's what I'm kind of getting to. It's like, you know, um, the, the importance of food in our, our lives, but our, in our relationships and our family. Um, and we're not a family who sits at the table. My husband's schedule is really erratic and stuff. And so we kind of just do, you know, whatever. And I'm not, I'm not saying that's wrong necessarily. Some people would, but, um, but I need to provide for my family because that's my highest calling is as a wife and mother. And, you know, my, my MDiv and my music degree and all those things are well and good. And, and I use them according to God's leading. But, um, but I have to listen to what he's saying to me. And he's saying, honor my first calling. And what his specific direction he's given me is, is to cook, which is one of the reasons I was open to doing this party because I'm trying to upgrade my tools clear out unnecessary tools and get tools that work and get tools that are good quality. And I'm not saying that as a Pampered Chef promo. I'm just saying that um, I've kind of lived on the cheap too much because I am very frugal and God's trying to teach me to, you know, enjoy the good gifts that he gives and, um, and you know, care for myself enough to allow myself to have some good gifts and still feel like I have to do the cheapest, uh, worst thing. So, yeah, so it was, this, this was, this week's been really nice, um, because, um, I've just enjoyed engaging with y'all online and some of y'all from home, some of you from, I haven't seen in years, some of you I've never met <laughs> and some of, you know, and who I still consider friends 
and just even just the games and just the laughing and you know the different at the different stuff that went on it is it was really fun when I did it with for Becky Vicks party to you know week before last and and I was just it was just such a needed thing for me and and just to kind of re you know reconnect with people from home because she's a hometown girl and and so this week has been you know God's really used it for for me to be able to um remember relationships and friendships and things like that and so and he used this experience with the cheese straws <laughs> to um uh to you know to just remind me that um i don't know what the word i'm trying to look for is the value of the, the value of simplicity and the value of connection and we're in a culture of everybody's going and doing or you have to you have to work so hard to buy all these things um, to live this certain kind of life and then you're so busy all the time because you have to give your child these experiences um, of, of all these things they're involved in and now most of those are out the window because of COVID um, which might be you know a blessing out of this um, but you know we don't have to keep grinding and working and being away from our kids just so we can give them the things that the world says import is important because what's really important is is the family and you know Jesus came into the world into a family and he and that's how God really redeems us first you know it's it's the life with our with our parents and our children and the hardships and and the love and the blessings and so th this was this kind of opened opened up some things for me to get me um, thinking about, you know, the memories of, of the past and the importance of those community and, and things like that. And the benefit of social media that we can still have a relationship with people that we wouldn't, that would just be people we used to know, which I, you know, talked about earlier on a post, you know, that, um, you know, uh, yeah, that was a post on Facebook, but actually, but uh, the... Uh, uh, the so yeah so what I'm getting out of here and the and the blessing God's done this through this little commercial endeavor um, has been to get me deeper into what He's calling me to be, which is to, a keeper of my home, and that the things that come uh, that the things that come out of that um, will be you know will be even a greater blessing. And I'm not I'm not saying it's wrong to be a working mom or anything like that because it's about what God's calling you to do in your family and you to do, um, you know, to be obedient to him. And so, and that's really what, it, what it's about. So, uh, I'm telling you what God's been showing me and what God's been calling me to do. Um, but I think most of, a lot of the things that I've said are, are pretty much universal because, you know, even if you're working outside of home, your family is your is your highest priority, and should be your highest priority. So, anyway, so I I thought, you know, that was all coming up around Thanksgiving. So I figured Thanksgiving, um, it it would you know it seemed providential that God was you know bringing that up at, at just this time, and so happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Thanks for being at the party. We decided to extend it till Monday. So, you have some more time, and uh, I look forward to chatting with y'all in the group and hopefully staying connected, at least through Facebook. All right, thanks. God bless you.